What do you get when you cross Black Widow with an ear of corn? Cobwebs. I've got some old and I've got some new to share with you in this Comic Book Editions video volume 134 today. Thanks for stopping by and welcome. If you're new to my channel and haven't subscribed, I hope you'll take this opportunity to do so. It's a great way to show support to my channel. Sharing this video and sharing this channel with someone that you think might enjoy it is another great way to show support. I'd love to know which cover out of all of the ones I'm going to share in today's video ends up being your favorite. So make sure to leave that in the comments below along with anything else that you want to dialogue. Let's get started sharing some books today. Now, if you are a comic book collector that kind of gets a little queasy if someone's touching the books raw and there's no bag or board around it, bear with me for just a couple of things that I want to show. They're out of the bag and the board for a purpose. I want to start out with two very low-grade books that I added into my collection. These are books that I wouldn't necessarily say I was seeking out, but you've heard me many times before say sometimes comic books just come into your life when they feel like it. And you got to be smart enough to take that opportunity because you might not get it again. So many times I've passed over books because it wasn't the right time for me at that point to get the book and then never had the opportunity again. And I can kick myself. Lots of FOMO. So no more FOMO. And these two books are examples of not uh, succumbing to FOMO. Because when I saw them, even though I wasn't really looking for them, the price was so good, even though they're low grade, I had to get them. The first one I want to show you is Nova, number one. The Man Called Nova, number one. His very first appearance of Nova, first appearance of Richard Ryder. Of course, my friend Comics for Thomas is a huge Nova fan, and he's put together this entire volume one run. Maybe it was seeing his books and some of the cool stuff, uh, some of the cool covers that he shared that kind of inspired me that when I saw this opportunity, I wanted to snag it up. At the time that I got this book, you know, we still thought that the Nova character was being developed into the MCU for a feature motion picture. It sounds like that's currently not the case anymore. Of course, that's always subject to change as well. As you can tell already just by looking at the cover, it's very low grade. But one of the reasons that I kept it out of the bag and board is to show you, ooh, this might, this might trigger you a little bit. It's a detached cover. Now, normally I don't do coverless or detached covers or something in this low of condition. But the price was just too good, even at this low of condition, not to add this into my collection. So I took advantage of it, and I did it. You know, since becoming friends with Comics for Thomas, I've added a few Nova comic books into my collection and have really enjoyed them. This story I have is like one of those dollar true believer reprints that Marvel did a couple years ago. So I've read the story already, but it's nice to have an original, authentic one, even if it is low grade, to have into my collection. This next book is Silver Haired Bronze Age Babe Approved. I haven't gotten her approval, but I know I have her approval, even though it's low grade. This is Superman's Girlfriend, Lois Lane, issue number 106. I haven't read this yet. You can tell already, I mean, you look at, at this rolled spine. Uh, the cover is attached, but looking at the back cover, there's a lot of wrinkles and a lot of wear on this back cover. This is something that I might end up maybe sending to uh, a press or a cleaner and seeing if they can't improve it a little bit. I mean, I'm not expecting miracles here or anything, but uh, it might be worth it. Even in this lower grade, this issue still commands a little bit of a price. This is a Robert Kaniger story. And if you're familiar with Robert Kaniger or, or have heard him talked about, you know, sometimes with Robert Kaniger stories, you get, well, sometimes you get some good ones, and sometimes you don't. I haven't read this yet, but I'm, I'm very well aware of what the story is about. This is where uh, Lois Lane wants to do a story about uh, Little Africa, which is a metropolis ghetto. So she asks Superman to take her to his fortress, where he has a machine that for 24 hours will turn her into a black woman. So she lives her life as a black woman. The story is called I Am Black, Curious. And it's been reprinted several times, so I'm anxious to get this. This book is a key, I think, for the reason, the subject of the storyline, and especially since it was 1970 when it was published. Um, so that's why it commands a little bit of a price. Like I said, even this lower 
condition it commands this much of a price, but I probably would never get another opportunity to get this book into my collection, so I'm taking it. And uh, Silver Hair Bronze Age Babe, a huge Lois Lane fan, and 2023 is the year of Lois Lane for her, especially on her channel. I've been trying to collect the Lois Lane uh, books backwards. I started at the end and have worked my way back, and, and I skipped a few to get to this number. But I also really enjoyed the Rose and Thorn stories, which are backups in this issue as well. So I am happy to get it. I think I'm going to invest a little bit more money and just see what a clean and a press can do to this. I don't know how much, especially with the, maybe the wrinkles in the back can be saved a little bit. I'm not sure about, about this, but it still, it still might be worth the investment to look into that. So that's probably on my to-do list sometime this year. While I'm talking about silver-haired bronze age babe, she is going to be the special guest on Fanboys Live in the Retro Review this upcoming Sunday. And we're celebrating National Women's History Month by doing a DC Comics crossover. It was the first all-female crossover ever done in DC Comics. And it was done over a three-issue period of Wonder Woman comic books, which also celebrated Wonder Woman's 40th anniversary. So it's Wonder Woman 291, 292, and 293, if I'm remembering correctly. And this Sunday at 8.15 Eastern, 7.15 Central, we'll be reviewing that live here on my YouTube channel. So make sure to join us for that. Women's History Month kicks off, uh, is the month of March, so that kicks off tomorrow. So tying in with that theme, the next book I want to show you showcases a bunch of Marvel ladies all together in one book. How, uh, with me being such a fan of the female superheroes and the female characters, the heroines, uh, the sheroes, how do I not have this book in my collection already? This is A-Force Volume 1, Issue Number 1, and this is the cover that I wanted to have, the main A cover. I did read the story, and I'll tell you I was 100% lost in what was going on. I, I still haven't quite figured out what was going on. I'm really puzzled why Dazzler is back in her disco costume, and I think she's flying in the story, too. I never remember Dazzler being able to have the ability to fly. So that kind of threw me a little bit for a loop. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the rest of the issues or not, but I really wanted this. I did put together a 2023 Top 12 Goal List video this year. Usually I do that, and I've done that the last couple of years, but I didn't do one this year. But had I done one, this book would have been on it, because this is something I've been eyeing and looking at and, and curious about for quite some time. And although, like I said, I really didn't understand the story, if you can add some clarity for me in the comment section, that is well appreciated. I still am glad that I did pick it up, though. But look at all those cool here. I mean, that's like all my favorites. I just wish Captain Marvel was the Ms. Marvel in the Black Lightning Bolt costume. But, man, you look at that, and I mean, we even have Phoenix and Spider-Woman and see Jubilee way back there, Scarlet Witch, Medusa, Storm, Monica Rambeau, Photon. Love it. And, of course, She-Hulk, center stage. Back in December, um, I was telling you that in 2023, you'd be seeing some Black Widow comic books on my channel. I want to show you a couple of those that I have in my collection. The first one is Amazing Adventures, Volume 2. This is issue number three. I've had the first issue of Amazing Adventures since I was a childhood collector. I don't know why I haven't finished up or added more to this run until now. Because it's two of my favorite characters. It's Black Widow. And it's the Inhumans. And uh, essentially, they just split the books, at least for the first I think Black Widows in the first eight or nine issues. And then the Inhumans are like through the first 10 issues. So this is issue number three. Really enjoyed the read. Really enjoyed both stories, as a matter of fact. So I'm glad that I pulled the trigger on this to add this to my collection. And another one I added into the collection was issue number six. So same deal, Inhumans, Black Widow. Um, I enjoyed this story so much, too, that I have pulled the trigger to purchase another Amazing Adventures uh, from this early run with the Inhumans and Black Widow, and I'll be showing that in a future Comic Book Editions video here on my channel. So after Black Widow and the Inhumans wrapped up starring in this title, they changed it over to Beast from the X-Men. 
Here is issue number 12. So this is the second appearance of the furry beast. He's still gray here like he was in his first appearance. His first appearance was a, uh, excuse me, a top 12 goal list book for me a couple years back that I was able to achieve. I think I bought it as a birthday gift to myself uh, maybe two years ago or so. And I'm glad I did. It's one that I've always wanted. I don't think I ever read the origin of how Beast went to his furry state until I got that issue. I don't ever have recalled reading that prior to that. It was a great story, and I'd love to get all of the Amazing Adventures, Volume 2, that collect Beast. So far, I have 11, and then I have 12. Now, this issue 12, if the cover looks a little bit familiar to you, maybe if you're familiar or if you own Avengers comic number 136, it's essentially reprinted in that book with the same cover, a little bit different coloring. They took out three pages of this story issue, or excuse me, pages 2, 3, and 21, I believe, to um, make it fit into the Avengers storyline. I don't have the Avengers 136, but I want to get it. Um, I don't know if there was some type of an editorial deadline that they were missing, so that's why they pulled this story to be able to do it or not. This is also Steve Englehart's first credited work at Marvel, is on this comic book as well. Classic cover there with um, Iron Man and Beast. And uh, I really enjoyed this too. So I need to get on and really wrap up the Amazing Adventures, the ones with Black Widow and the Inhumans, and then wrap up the ones with Beast on there. Because the ones that I have and the ones that I've read, I certainly have. This next book takes me all the way back to my childhood, in a sense, because I remember going to kindergarten with DC Comics Presents number one. I love the book. I even had a little chunk of the cover missing because I took it to school every day. And it's a two-part story, but I never bought the second part. I never bought issue number two. So when I saw it, I said, yeah, I think it's time for me to pick up issue number two to actually see how this story ends. I remember just loving issue number one. Like I said, I took it to school every day. Now, issue number two, whew, I had a hard time with this story. I just couldn't get into it. I don't know what, I don't know what was going on. I mean, it's the era that I love. It's two characters that I enjoy as well. But I just could not get into this story. One thing I did like, though, it mentions a specific date. And June 20th, 1979, I believe, is mentioned as the day that this story is happening on. June 20th is the birthday of uh, twin friends of mine. And they're both comic book collectors. You've heard me talk about them on my channel before. Uh, one collects Marvel, one collects DC. So although they were born in 1979, earlier than that, but it was on June 20th. So maybe I should get two more copies of this and make sure that they each get one for their birthday. Or at least the DC fan out of the two of them gets one. I don't know what I'll do with the other one. I don't know what we'll do with that Marvel fan. But the question of always wondering how the story wrapped up, I know I could have read it digitally, but now I have it. I don't regret buying it, even though I just couldn't get into it. One of the few exceptions of a Bronze Age book that I just couldn't get into. So also recently on my channel, uh, you've heard me talk about how I've upped my Omnibus game. and. Um, I bought a Wonder Woman Omnibus number three. And then when I was looking into getting number four, I realized that it had gone out of print. And it was starting to become hard to find, let alone a sealed copy, let alone finding it at cover price or below. I spent a lot of time researching. Um, and I did find a Wonder Woman Omnibus Golden Age volume number four sealed, and I got it for undercover price, including shipping. And although I wasn't really ready to pull the trigger price wise after just buying an omnibus a few weeks before that, I knew this was going to get nothing but harder to get. And there was only one, one online retailer that I could find this book at this price. The rest of the places, I was seeing it three, four, five hundred dollars. I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. So this book was released three years ago in March. And as of right now, it's still the current omnibus. Now, they had solicited a Volume 5 Golden Age omnibus, and then it got pulled. 
And then just recently, a couple weeks ago, Penguin Random House finally resolicited the Golden Age Volume 5, and that is scheduled, I believe, for an October release right now. So what I'm doing is just saving some of my money, you know, like 10, 15 bucks a month, every month, so I can just buy it brand new when it comes out and not have to worry um, about getting the money together or, or if it ends up out of print faster. Now, in this omnibus, it wraps up all of Wonder Woman's appearances in Comic Cavalcade. In the volume five that will be coming out in the fall in October, it will end up wrapping up all of Wonder Woman's appearances in Sensation Comics. And from my estimate, at first I thought it would be one, but then I did some more checking. They need two more volumes after five to wrap up all of her Golden Age stories, and I hope they do. There's many comics in this volume that have never been reprinted until this omnibus came out. And uh, I think you'd be surprised. Even There's even a, a good chunk of Bronze Age comic books of Wonder Woman's that aren't available digitally on the, officially, I should say, um, on the DC Comics app, too. Um, some Actually, some really good stories. Now, she has some issues that are pretty good, and she has some that are not. But isn't that every character? So speaking of omnibuses, too, before I wrap up this topic, because I, I just, I love these omnibuses. I thought to myself, ooh, you know, there's these, this Batgirl Bronze Age omnibus. And I started looking at Volume 1, and I found some really decent prices for Volume 1. And I came close to pulling the trigger. Then I thought, well, let's look at the prices for Volume 2. Then I realized Volume 2 is out of print. And once again, the prices are sky high in Volume 2. So I'm like, yeah, probably not going to get Volume one, if I can't get volume two. So as of right now, I have that on a tentative hold. I probably don't need it, but I was looking at it. I've also been curious about an X-Men Hidden Years omnibus, and there hasn't been one released. Now I see one is solicited, and that is coming in the fall as well. And part of me really thinks I need to have this. Now, I don't own any of the X-Men Hidden Years comic book, but I have borrowed them from a friend and read the entire series, and it was okay. But I don't know if I should buy that omnibus, because in all honesty, I think I would buy it, read it once, put it on my shelf, and probably never pick it up again. And I could probably deviate that money to something I would enjoy a little bit more or reread or enjoy a little bit more than that. Plus, it's on the Marvel app, and I can read those comics there digitally, too. So I am trying to convince myself that I don't need that. What will happen when I actually see one in person? We might be in a future video linking back to this video right now of me saying, yeah, I don't need it, I don't need it, and then showing that I bought it. Who knows? On a recent Fanboys Live in the Retro Review, in the book show portion, even though it's not a book, I did show the Wonder Woman Superpowers action figure that I picked up from my Walmart. Um, I got this right after they started showing up. Looked on the Walmart app. It said it was available at the Walmart closest to me. You know, five-minute drive away. I get there, aisle 19. I find the peg for Wonder Woman, and it's all full of Nightwing. The peg for Nightwing is all full of Nightwing. They had... All the other characters in this wave, except Wonder Woman. She was on the peg, as listed, Wonder Woman was supposed to be here. I actually got someone that was nice enough to go back, and for whatever reason, they were still wearing the back, and opened up two cases and let me take the minty freshest one out of those two cases to add into my collection. No lasso, but we get a red cape on this figure. Where's that lasso? I will say I was almost tempted to buy the Nightwing action figure. I really liked that and thought that that turned out well. I was a superpowers collector of the original line. That was kind of towards the end of my toy buying as a childhood collector. But I did have the Hall of Justice and many of the action figures in the different waves from that line. And as an adult collector, you know, I'm not going to pass up on these. I think these are Walmart exclusives too, if I'm not mistaken. So two more books that I want to share with you before we wrap up today's video. I've been talking a lot, too, about the fact that they've just been doing all of these Wonder Woman covers for the current issues. And the new issue came out last week. It came out uh, a week ago today, 796. And I'm going to show you the 1 in 50 variant. This is the foiled out of its mind virgin variant, a 1 in 50. 
for Wonder Woman 796. Sorry of all the glare that you're getting from the lights. And then we'll wrap up the video by showing you the 1 in 25 ratio variant for issue number 796 released last week as well that showcases Yara Floor, Wonder Girl, on the cover. I usually don't show the regular current issues I buy because I don't buy that much and you've already seen them on other people's channels well before they end up on my channels too. But the ratios I try to show because sometimes you get to see covers that you normally or might not have seen somewhere else too. Plus it fits in with my branding and I do it for the funsies of it. Okay, there you go. For today's comic book editions, volume 134, what did you think? I asked you earlier in this video, drop me a comment, let me know which cover was your favorite. So make sure to do that. We can dialogue about any of these comic books or anything else that you want to talk about in the comment section below. Don't miss out on Fanboys Live and the retro review coming up this weekend with Silver Haired Bronze Age Babe. We have had some great guests already this year on Fanboys Live and uh, even right before at the end of 2022. And we have some great guests coming too in the future of Fanboys Live and the Retro Review. It's such a fun show to do. The greatest DC comic show on YouTube, Sunday Nights, uh, currently running on my channel. Um, eventually, I, I suppose it's going to get back to rotating to the other folks' channels when the other panel members can join back in. But right now, it's been on my channel lately, and I look forward to seeing you Sunday night for that. And then I look forward to seeing you for our next comic book editions video, volume 135. It will be right here next week. Until then, take care and have a fantastic rest of your week.